you want to go from idea to working product. And today it's possible with Cloud Code Cursor, Windsurf, Lovable, V0, Bolt, uh, Replit. There's so many out there. All of them let you go from idea to something that works or kind of works. And in this video, I want to explain how can you go from kind of works to works. It does require you to learn a couple of fundamentals. There are things that, you know, people like me who have been doing software for many years, we understand about how to build and how to follow best practices. But now there's so many people new that want to build software. There are great tools out there. But if you understand these fundamentals that I'm going to explain in this video, you're going to be much better off. So let me start by first showing you this meme, which is very relatable. Um, in software, in the beginning of times, we had waterfall, which is sort of a technique of managing projects where things are planned ahead of time and they're implemented in phases. It, it doesn't work um, because projects change so much. They shift in requirements they shift in priorities and it is really naive, in fact, to try to plan ahead so many months uh, when things are moving as fast as they are today. So waterfall is something that's pretty known to fail and to not be ideal. So people came up with a better approach, Agile. Agile was then much, much better. It allows you to start with a simple concept such as, oh, I want to go from place A to place B. How about you start building a skate? <laughs> and then you evolve into a car. That's a really great way to start with a simple product and evolve it to a more powerful, more unique, um, you know, product working thing. But you don't necessarily need to start with the car. Uh, you can have the main features done with a very simple MVP. So this is really important for software companies to understand. With AI, things have shifted. So now when you prompt an AI, it's going to be biased towards building the most robust and incredible piece of technology. Uh, you know, it's doing its best and depending on the way that you prompt it, you're telling the AI that this is what you want, but this is very counter to what, is, what it actually takes to build uh, software at scale. And so this is a, a, a really funny, relatable meme, but it's a very true trap that many beginners fall into, you know, trying to develop and vibe code apps and not realize that you shouldn't be starting with uh, a spaceship, you can do it in much better ways and evolve. So uh, let's move on and uh, talk about the coding death spiral. The coding death spiral is going to happen uh, a lot because of this characteristic of AI and the prompts that we, that we give them. <laughs> Basically, if you give it a very complex PRD, a very complex prompt, the AI is going to go in a loop trying to make that happen. And soon enough, depending on what you're trying to do, you're not going to one shot uh, a really powerful, complex SaaS application. You're most likely going to get into a state of errors, endless, endless errors and it becomes almost impossible to get out of that state. And you need to throw the entire project away and start over. This is very common these days. And if you want to build something that lasts, something that you can sell customers, make profit and provide them for a very long time, uh, you want a better approach. You, you don't really want to be throwing away your entire code every other week because you got into this dev spiral state. Uh, I even wrote a blog post about it, not this one, <laughs> this one, uh, talking about that. And it's a really important thing.
thing to understand how you can get out of this uh, loop. In that blog post, I talk about one aspect, but in this video, I'm going to go much deeper into why this happens and how you can fix it. So let's go over here and let me tell you something that we do as developers to improve our workflows. It's all about automation and code quality. So what is automation? Automation is having code, is having utilities that are going to run automatically and are going to uh, do certain tasks. For example, formatting. Formatting is making sure that your code follows a certain pattern. This is helpful for us humans when we read it. It is terrible to read unformatted code. You want great formatting. And every major technology language has uh, default formatters that you can use. <laughs> also, linting. Linting is a way to introspect into the code and find common problems. So TypeScript has it, every major language has it. And you want to have a linter configured to your preferences, making sure that code quality is being enforced automatically. You also want to be splitting your code by uh, domain and splitting your code by function. So you don't want to have really huge uh, files. Uh, they can grow to a certain size, but at some point you need to be splitting them and creating abstractions that can be reused across your code. Otherwise, you're going to have repetition everywhere and your AI tools like Claude Code, they're going to struggle to do anything uh, without spending hours and hours letting the AI run to edit uh, a bunch of files. When you have good abstractions, you can leverage the code in multiple places. So that's a good idea. Also docs. Documentation is important for developers and is so important for LLMs. Uh, docs explain what the code is doing, why it's there, what are the limitations of that code? So we still want to have documentation available in our code base to help the AI implement the right things, go into the right direction, and avoid creating a state of corruption in your code that it's pretty much impossible to get out of. And that's the first part when it comes to automation that you want. But there's more. The other thing that you want to do is have automated tests, business logic tests. You want to make sure that you have a good coverage, uh, meaning that your logic, the things that are assumptions about the system are properly tested. Uh, at a unit test, it is super important, but you also want to uh, do other types of testing, end-to-end -end testing, load testing, there are multiple angles when we think about software testing that are important to have. And they basically create for you a layer of quality assurance to make sure that when you push changes of your code to your customers, you're not pushing breaking uh, mistakes, failures, defects, things that are going to ruin the experience for your customers. Uh, it's definitely important to have this layer, uh, which also helps uh, other developers and your AI tools to better understand the context of your code base and how things should behave. It's sort of a, a different type of documentation, but more powerful in a way because you can run this documentation. You can run and you can validate uh, that changes that you made are not breaking past behavior uh, in unexpected ways. Super important. And with AI, uh, not so difficult to, to add. If you are also in an IDE, like Cursor, uh, VS Code, Windsurf, those all can provide diagnostics and inference about the code. So when you get those errors that pop up, in your IDE, you can expose those to something like Claude code, which is, uh, again, helpful. Now, 
what I want to tell you about all of this automation is that it's thousand times more important today than it used to be. It used to be super important, essential for any serious software project. But now with AI, it becomes fundamentally more useful to have those elements in your code base because of how uh, LLMs work. So this flow is from an Anthropic blog post about agents and Cloud code behaves pretty much in this way, where we as humans, we create prompts, we give tasks to the LLM. The LLM then goes into a loop where it takes actions, which is calling tools that's going to affect the environment and the environment gives feed feedback to the LLM. So it continues on this loop until it decides that it has fulfilled the request of the human. Now, all of this automation is feedback, is extra feedback that you are giving to the LLM about the environment. So if you only have code and you have no automation, it's very easy for the LLM to hallucinate mistakes and those mistakes can stack up and result in code that breaks, that doesn't work. Now, the more automation that you have to ensure and increase code quality, product quality, the more feedback the LLM has. So if it makes a change and it breaks a test, it has feedback telling that the test is broken. So it can continue making changes to fix that test. So to fix its own code, you're creating a more rich environment for your coding AI assistant to work on. And that's the key element that many people that are new to software uh, don't fully understand yet. But if you understand and you implement this in your code base, you're gonna become much more powerful as an AI uh, you know, developer, as a vibe coder, you'll be able to do a lot more. Uh, now, this is all great, but there's still another piece that is how you write your prompts. This is also important. Uh, this KO framework I saw in this blog post right here. Uh, the author is Alex Dunlop. And in that blog post, he shares this KO framework, which is uh, just a way to structure to structure your prompt in a way to give better context to your LLM AI coding assistant. Uh, it has the situation, it has the context, the audience limitations and expected outcome. I'm sure there are many other frameworks and many other ways to organize your prompt. This is, this is just one way that I think can work pretty well. But the idea is that if you give your, your cloud code, for example, a very short prompt, uh, it, it basically has an infinite amount of tokens that it can generate. So it's not going to have any idea about what's the ideal outcome that you want, what are the constraints that you want. So it's going to be very easy for the LLM to fall into that trap of starting with something amazing that's not going to work. And that's not what you want. You want to prompt in ways that lead your coding assistant to the outputs and to the results that you want. Meaning, be explicit in your prompts that you want simple MVP implementation with good testing, with clear uh, documentation in the project. Be very explicit in your documentation be very explicit in the prompt that you send. Uh, that's what's going to guide tools like Cloud Code and Cursor to better results. So yeah, your prompts matter a lot. Uh, it matters a lot what you say um, because that's what the LLM has to work with. It has your code, which is the environment, and it has your input as a human, if you remember this diagram. So when you input 
a request, you have to be very mindful that the request uh, is going to happen. And if you are unclear about giving those requirements, you're going to get garbage code. And that's not what we want. So if you combine those two things, if you have really great automation helping you increase code quality, you write good contextual prompts about your requests, those two things combined are going to uh, increase so much your output. It's going to increase so much the quality of your product and it's going to mean also that you spend less time fighting these agents and telling fix this, fix this, fix this because it made so many mistakes because from the beginning you forgot to do these things. You didn't put automation, you didn't care about cold quality, you didn't care about the prompts that you wrote. Uh, the result is not going to be good at all. And if you do these things in the beginning or if you start to implement these things, you are definitely going to see better results and that's basically uh, today what I understand are the necessary elements to use in our day-to-day -day using Cloud Code and using Cursor to get better results and to avoid falling into this trap of bugs and bugs and bugs that seem to never end. Uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to share in this video. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate that you watch this and I see you on the next.